Pizza Dudes got 30 seconds. Here's a look at the new NECA Toys. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie series, six and a half inch Michelangelo. Now you can catch America's favorite green teens in their first live action blockbuster film. After waiting in a puddle of radioactive waste, these radical reptiles are transformed into New York City's greatest crime fighting quartets. Michelangelo is the easygoing, free spirited brother who loves being a turtle and loves his pizza. But make no mistake, this wise turtle never pays full price for late pizza. This highly detailed action figure stands 6.5 inches tall and features 30 points of articulation, including double elbows, double knees, cowabunga. Let's get this review underway by figuring out how tall Michelangelo stands. It's going to be pretty consistent with all the other turtles that we've had a look at as they are utilizing the exact same body mold. So that being said, let's first figure out, like I said, how tall this one is. So putting the Ultra Measure Tron to the top of his head, I know I was talking a little bit there, got sidetracked. Now resume. I'm not get too sidetracked much further. 6.2. 6.2 inches in height. I'm realizing also I'm going to have to come close to changing into battery soon because the Ultra Measuretron 5000 is starting to wind. Needless to say, accurately, whether again I've missed my mark a little bit, the figure stands 15.9, about 16 centimeters tall. And I know you guys have been waiting for this moment. I have been waiting for this moment. Let's bring in all the four brothers and put them side by side. Raphael, we just had a look at. Previously to that, we had a look at Donatello. And previously to that, we had a look at Leonardo. Let's put them all in frame here. Oh yes, it's certainly good to be a turtle fan. NECA has answered the call and given us figures, exactly the type of figures that we've been asking for for years. Movie accurate replicas of our favorite turtle uh, film. I think even to this day, the original 90s turtle film is still beloved by many and still considered the greatest turtle movie of all time. And so I think statement-wise, calling the original 90s turtle film the greatest turtle film of all time, I think still stands true. Even the Michael Bay produced two turtle films, even though it played a service to the second one for fans, I think still doesn't have the heart, the love, and just the absolute joy that watching the original 90s turtle film gives us the viewers. Certainly, if you feel opposite to that, let me know down below what your favorite turtle film is. It's still, for me, the real original 90s film. I'm just putting together a few slices of pizza. Well, I guess we're finishing off. How many slices? What's an, what's eight slices? Is that a large? Is that a medium? I feel like medium six, large is eight, extra large is 12. Is that right? Is that right? If that would be the case, based on what I've just described, I would say that this is half of a large pizza. The large pizza, I don't know what the other half would have consisted of, but certainly this half, the turtles decided for this half of their pizza that they wanted all gross stuff. So anchovies, olives, no thank you. I'm not really sure what else is in there. Possibly mushrooms, some extra cheese. But one thing you can also see too is it does look like all the slices of pizza are identical to one another. That's at least what I'm seeing here. Maybe, yes, no, maybe so. Um, love to see if they had included a pizza box. Now there was the baby turtles uh, that did come with a pizza box, but I don't think it's the same size. I feel like it was a little bit bigger because of course they had to be smaller in scale. The boxes and everything else around them had to be bigger to make them look even smaller. Uh, would love to have seen these guys get themselves at least a pizza box. Maybe if even one of them, like like Michelangelo here, had included it, then you could have put the pizzas in there, the slices, the untouched slices, which we know wouldn't last very long at all. Moving that to the side, Michelangelo gives two thumbs up. Literally, he has two thumbs up. Uh, these are the pair of hands that come included with the figure. Now, it's not necessarily dictating the fact that you have to put these specific hands, these ones right here, with this turtle. In fact, you don't even have to do that at all. You could use, say, for example, the hands that came included. I believe these were the ones that came with Raphael. Uh, there was, of course, the high five hands that came included with 
uh, Leonardo and all of the coloring on all of them are the exact same. So if you wanted to use the Cowabunga, which likely would be a fun thing to do, uh, two of the turtles at the very least could do a Cowabunga and I might just end up doing that Cowabunga high five. Changing out the hands, uh, simply just the case. Now this is one thing you do have to be a little bit careful of. You just wiggle this off the socket like so. I did notice as I expressed concern of that in the, I think it was the Raphael review, that these hands, some of the hands are soft plastic, softer plastic. I guess they would all be made of the same material, but some of them are a little bit more susceptible, unfortunately, to the pegs coming loose, as you can see right there. So when you are taking them out of the hand, thumbs up by the way, when you are taking them, I'm here all day, when you are taking them out, just be very, very careful. Wiggle them out as best you can. If you start feeling as if something is staying behind, try to get your finger further into where the peg is to just sort of hold the hand as best you can. And then, of course, you're not going to have that problem with the pegs popping out. Uh, I'm probably going to end up just gluing the one problemed hand I had. And again, that's not going to be across the board, but just FYI. I'm all about giving the FYIs. I'm going to talk about the bandana in a second. Of course, we want to have a look at the nunchucks. I'm so always inclined when I was younger and even when I was doing earlier reviews to call these nunchucks, but they are nunchucks, N-U-N chucks. And you actually get two of these. What's a nice feat, though, is not only are the handle portions of the nunchucks really good, but they also give you a real cording in the middle, not settling uh, as some other companies have done for nunchucks to put plastic as the string between these. These certainly make them a little bit more pliable and certainly a lot more realistic uh, in the nature of which you can have them displayed in his hand. You could even do some nunchuck action. But to get them into Michelangelo's hand, simply just a case of sliding them, not dropping them, but sliding them. Let me just grab it right here. I see where it is. It fell almost into the black hole. I was quickly able to catch it. No harm, no foul, no casualties. Go ahead and get the nunchucks both into his hand. And there we go. You can have, have Michelangelo wielding both of them. And in really, in a natural way, they do have a natural spinning because they do make use of real cording. Nice job there, NECA toys. Uh, from what I can see, there's no real place where you can store them other than, let me just move these out of the way here, move his arms out of the way here. You could tuck them together, put them together to kind of form a closer knit package. And then if you'll move just arms out of the way, there is technically a section right here at the side uh, where you can just kind of tuck them in. They're a little harder, unfortunately, to kind of get out, but you can kind of tuck them into the sides. I think this is pretty much where he puts them in the film, if I'm not mistaken. And again, you can just tuck them on either side right here. So you can display them like that. Certainly, you can then make use of a pizza slice, because I'm sure he's going to be the first one running over to the what I believed to be the large-sized gross pizza, and he can grab himself a slice, maybe making use of one of the other various hands that came included with the turtles. So we'll just slip these out a little, I guess a little bit easier to slip out than they are to, to actually fit in there. Uh, the other accessory, of course, that he comes included with is the same accessory, minus just a different color ch uh, change. He does also come with the swappable uh, flip-over version of the bandana. As you can see right now, on your looking left is where the bandana is currently resting on his shoulders. But if you want the bandana to rest on the looking at right side of Michelangelo, like I'm currently very crudely indicating here, simply just a case of spinning the figure around detaching it as best you can. Just wiggle, 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 wiggle. You don't necessarily have to make the noise while you're wiggling it out. Find the one that you want to use and the texturing will sort of dictate which side it's going to face. See, one side is smooth, the other side is sort of textured and more painted also, I might add, and just wiggle this back in. It seems when you are putting it in that the peg is larger than what you would expect, but some tried and true determination because you can do it you can get the bandana on the other side. Again, depending on, purists will of course look scene to scene and figure out, okay, on this scene, where he's spinning the nunchucks, the bandana is on this side. So, that kind of gives you that consideration by giving you options to switch them out on either side, instead of just expecting you to flip this around, 
and spinning around to the other side, which I guess is still something that is accomplished. But anybody looking at this that has that eye for detail is just going to know you you just totally you you half asked it and you flipped it around to the other side. So it really should go on that side, as you can see texturing right there. So let's have a look at the figure. And like I said, a spe spectacular release from NECA Toys. The fourth, technically the fourth turtle that we've looked at. We've looked at in depth, I would hope, all the other turtles leading up to this point. Leading up to this point is probably one of my favorites of the turtles. It's Michelangelo, both in the film and both in figure form. Now, if we look at again at some of the turtles that we've already had a look at, there was Donatello. I'm just bringing these in just as an example to show you. I'm certain that people would want to be seeing all four of them anyways together. That's the way it should be. And it's again Leonardo. I leave Leonardo to the front because of the two, of the four, these two are my personal favorites. So happens also to be the case where it looks like they're probably Mold Brothers as well. The reasoning why I say that, if I spin this around to this other side here, oh, actually, maybe not. It seems as if now that I'm looking at it, initially thinking that these were Mold Brothers, let's just actually have a look at, yeah, there you go. So it seems that Michelangelo, Donatello, and just again to prove that point as well, there's the two of them side by side. It seems that all three of these brothers, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Donatello, all share the exact same mold. What I mean by that is, if you look at the back gap here, all those three brothers that I just mentioned have a further gap space from the way that the shell leans out from the torso. Leonardo happens to be the only one that doesn't have as much the gap showing, and I'm wondering why they ended up doing that. Obviously, it's more specific to the film. But I mean, certainly from making use of molds, it would have been so much easier from NECA's part to simply just use the mold for all four turtles. So it's that attention to detail that I certainly appreciate that they specifically left less of a gap for Leonardo's shell than for Michelangelo's here. Let me know down below, by the way, what your favorite turtle is. I feel so compelled just to keep the rest of these in the shot for the rest of this review. I don't know if that's going to be too much of a distraction for everybody. Uh, but... All the same, pretty much the color choices that they went with all the three other turtles make their present appearance here for Michelangelo. The spots become a little bit more generous along the top area, around the side cheek area of Michelangelo, sort of giving him a more youthful complexion in the way that these almost kind of mimic more so freckles. For Whereas the rest of the brothers have spots, it seems like the placement, like I said, of these ones come across like Michelangelo has almost had all more freckles, making them feel younger by comparison. Love the dark shading that they've done to the lower area of the neck, where it sort of has that natural shade, that natural shade would it be created by having a larger head sitting on the top. The sheen still is very much the same sheen, not Charlie sheen, but the same sheen to the paint is still ever much present here on Michelangelo that was present with all the other three turtles as well. Love the shading. I mean, the paint consistently, without me sounding like a broken record, is solidly good. The two tones, and are in some cases three tones of greens, sort of this military, I always say it's military, but it's almost like a swamp green, mixed very well with this kind of lighter brown color, this brownish red, it was like a rusted red that finds its way around sort of the tipped areas of muscles, around the areas of the legs, the hands, the forearms, and the even the bicep areas all have that. Freckled placements here on, Mike, on Michelangelo is going to be very much different to all the other ones that we had a look at. Still, common trends let's for example have a look at their shells so like michelangelo's shell has the very obvious three placement of the the two the three placements of the three platelets here versus the larger ones here on raphael it also seems like the shell shape is a little bit different as well let's flip this flip around donatello have a look at him yeah the shell placement the shell sculpt is very much different as well Michelangelo, I can't help but notice, also has more of a ridge, almost like a pie crust ridge sticking up. Of course, this guy's going to be comparing it to food. The little edged areas here round up a little bit higher than some of the other turtle brothers. Let's flip around. Ah, see, there you go. So it does seem like it, it shares, well, I, obviously the placement, flip it around again so you guys can see, this one does have 
very much more of a noticeable gap between the two, they do in fact share the same shells. So there is a little bit of a mold carryover there as well. Uh, for this guy's articulation, because it's certainly, you know, not too much more that can really add to these. I guess actually that's not true. Looking at the mouths, the mouths are obviously very different. The shapes of the heads are very much different. Raphael and Michelangelo both share molds in the sense that both of them have visible teeth. Obviously, they're not the exact same mold. You can see how very drastic those molds look to one another. Raphael sort of has a more grizzled, older look to his head sculpt. Again, Michelangelo looks like he's a little bit more youthful by comparison. But I love the fact that they've given him a tongue, little visible lower areas of his teeth, whereas... Like I said, Raphael has just the more grimmest teeth. And then Donatello and certainly Michael, uh, Leonardo, Leonardo, as we've already had a look at them, all have closed mouths. So there's a little bit of separation for sculpt there as well. As I said, let's have a look at this guy's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down and it rocks back and forth. I love the fact that you could do this with someone like Michelangelo because it really adds, again, more to his playfulness than the other turtles as well. The bandana, just by the way it's pegged into place, allows for a full rotation back and forth. That's cheating right there. And you can have it on that side, which is the more accurate side. Switching it out then to this one. Yeah, we've already talked about that. The hands rotate, or I should say the arms rotate all the way around. They have a swivel point that happens on the forearm all the way around. A double hinge on the elbow back and forth. Still slightly restricted by the elbow pad. And the hands also rotate all the way around, hinging back and forth. Michelangelo also, like Raphael, because he doesn't have the strapping harness here like Leo and Donnie has, also can get a little bit more access to that ball joint that really wasn't present before. You can rotate the torso all the way around, but I mean, really, it's still only going to give you this much space to clear back and forth. But he does have a rock happening at the upper, upper torso section here. Legs split, legs split, forward and back, bend at the knee. Uh, somewhat of a swivel. There you go, a full swivel in the in the lower uh, lower leg area. This hinges back and forth on the feet and ankles back and forth. An ankle rocker back and forth as well. Certainly, this would be a case. These were all sold separately. I can't imagine one that there would be collectors out there. Not to not to make such a generalized statement, but I can't imagine there would be many collectors that would only get, say, one turtle, unless that was the only one that they had in the store. Likely, if you're gonna be getting one, you're probably gonna be getting all of them. NECA could easily have also sold these as a four pack, where you would instantly get all the four turtles right out the bat, right out the, bat, right out the gate, and you would have your collection fully finished. Unfortunately, that's not the case, and the case rather instead is the fact that you have to source out all of these at your local GameStop, as all four of the turtles, as I mentioned over the course of these four reviews, are only exclusive, sadly, to GameStop in-store and GameStop online. And because they are a team after all, and final looks for Michelangelo, the fourth turtle in the series of these reviews, I would feel out of place if I didn't simply have in final looks all the four brothers put together. These have been an absolute pleasure to review. The fact that NECA toys, or even the fact that we are looking years later at fully rendered, fully realized replicas of the original movie Turtles from the 90s film, is just still something that staggers me. Sure, again, we already got these guys all four of these turtles in quarter scale format but for me the real love for this line is for the fact that they were able to scale these down to six and a half inch something that is a little bit more generous and a little bit more forgiving when it comes to my display i don't have a lot of space uh, unfortunately as you guys know in this reviewing channel of mine i review a lot of stuff so space becomes always a priority uh, it's not that for the fact I don't like the quarter scale figures, it's simply just a case where I prefer smaller scale figures because they fit on a shelf so much easier. Again, if you guys are interested in picking these ones up due to what I could only believe to be licensing agreements with Playmates, these are only exclusive to one store. In other words, if you were able to pre-order these ones initially from GameStop, then congratulations, you were one of the lucky ones. In the meantime, though, if you guys are still interested in picking these ones up now, your best bet 
is just to check your local stores on a regular basis. Call them if you can, or just if you're in an area where there is a store, just pop in from time to time and see if there is a chance where these guys will be available. It's not quite the same comparison, but I kind of look at these also like the NES Classics. At one point, NES Classics were very hard to come by. People were paying ridiculous amounts from scalpers that were more than willing to take your money for them. As the availability became a little bit more saturated, the scalpers were now stuck with inventory that they just couldn't sell. Wait it out is what advice I can give you guys from one reviewer to you guys, the viewers. Wait it out. NECA knows that you guys are interested in picking up these and they are continuing to stock the stores. Don't pay the ridiculous prices that the scalpers want you to pay for these online. Just give it time and these eventually you should be able to find these at your local stores. Today though, like I said, we were having a look at the final turtle of this spectacular release from the folks over at NECA Toys. Today we were having a look at the 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Michelangelo, which just so happened to also be the final figure of the four turtle set. If you guys have enjoyed these reviews, I certainly would appreciate a like down below and let me know if you've managed to pick up these figures for yourself, what you think of them. Always like reading your new comments, always like reading comments from new people subscribed to this channel. And if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. Can't just promise though it's going to be turtle related, but probably most definitely there's going to be some future NECA reviews coming soon to this channel. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.